Show me the money. All right, show me the money time. NFL picks wild card weekend. Joining me today on the lines, let me talk to you back in week two. A big Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, Charlie Boris is back. Charlie, how are you? I'm doing good, Mike. How are you? Doing pretty good. Did you like my sign there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You always come up with the uh got the props. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's been a while, man. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Um you know, the Bucks they're in the playoffs for the first time yeah. since my freshman year of high school. And then currently twenty seven. So it's good to it's good to be back in the postseason again. Yeah, that I mean I mean Considering my team now is at the longest playoff drought in the NFL, I don't envy you. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm a Mets fan as well, so it's been a while since we I've seen, seen any success. success. I'm a Devils fan. It's been since 2003 since they last won a cup. I was a New Jersey Nets fan, and they left the state, so I deserve something positive in the sports world. That's all I'm going to say. You got Tom Brady. That's a good start. Uh, uh, yeah, and it he panned out pretty well. He did. So, I mean, we got to see year one of Tom Brady through 40 touchdown passes the first time forever. So as somebody who's watched this team game in game out, what'd you think about year one of Tom Brady? Um, th- it was a lot of positives, but when there were negatives, they were very glaring. Um, you said he had 40 touchdowns on the year. It was his second highest of his entire career. His size was 50 and the year there went what 19 and one when they yeah, lost yeah. the Giants in the Super Bowl. So it was a good year from Brady. Um statistically one of his best in his career at 43 in an entirely new offense in an entirely new town. So I give him credit, but hopefully none of those negatives that were apparent against New Orleans, um against a few other of those teams, they don't show up in the post. Yeah, they don't. And the one thing I think is about week 17, obviously you win, that's great, but Mike Evans hurts his knee, and we don't know if he's going to have an impact availability for Saturday night against Washington. Like, how concerned are you about that? I'm not really concerned. Um, I know he, he's, like, day-to-day. Yeah. I know he didn't participate in today, which is Tuesday. Yeah. Um, he didn't participate in practice today, but – He's been known to play through injury. Um, he did it earlier in the year. Um, he's had a foot issue. I think it was his ankle. And it was very noticeable in a few games in earlier in the year when he was jumping for passes. He'd land on or t- would try to land on one ankle and not the other. Uh, but he still played. I believe he played, he played every game this year. So I'm not really worried about it. If he doesn't play, it, it wouldn't surprise me, but if he does, it also wouldn't surprise me. But if he doesn't play, that just gives Antonio Brown more touches. And we saw it in week 17 against the Falcons when Evans went down. Brown had over 100 yards receiving and two touchdowns. When you can replace Mike Evans with Antonio Brown, I really don't think you have that much of a problem. Yeah, that's true. And this way they get the matchup on the road against the Washington football team. And I think this could be a closer matchup than people think just because they have that pass rush and Tom Brady is not a big fan of having deal teams that can rush with just four. Is this that concern you at all in this game? I agree with you. Um, my dad's a, a Washington football team fan. And he texted me this morning. He said, well, at least your team will make it to the second round. And I said, dad, you have no idea what you're talking about the Buccaneers uh, record against playoff teams this year is one in five. five. They lost twice against the saints. They lost to the chiefs. They lost to the uh, bears and they lost to the Rams. The only playoff team that they won coincidentally was the green Bay Packers who have the first round bye. So apparently, so the best team in their conference, they slaughtered, but the other teams that they've played in the postseason, they looked terrible. And that's, that was the uh, the inconsistency that I was talking about with Tom Brady earlier. In those five games, he looked incredibly inconsistent, and he looked like he was 43. And all the other games, he looked like he was 30 again, trying to go for a perfect season. And when you have somebody like um, Chase uh, – what's his name? Chase Young. Chase Young, yeah. 
when you have somebody like that on the defensive line and he's come out and said, I want Tom Brady. And I obviously Bruce Arian said, dude, be careful what you wish for. But if you have Chase Young up against Donovan Smith, the left tackle, I'm going with Chase Young every day of the week. So if the Buccaneers primetime struggles and struggles against playoff teams continue and Donovan Smith plays like he's Donovan Smith and Chase Young plays like he's Chase Young, it's going to be a long game and a lot closer than people would think. Yeah, indeed. And before we get to this week's picks, we had some news to break earlier today that the Cleveland Browns, who are playing this weekend in Pittsburgh, are going to their head coach, Kevin Stefanski, because he's tested positive for COVID. They're down two coaches, two position players. You actually got to see this happen to another team because the Bucs played the Lions in week 16. Daryl Bevel was out for COVID protocol. All the defensive play callers out of their defensive play because of COVID protocols in. Considering your experience watching what happened to Detroit there, I would think this is not good for Cleveland. It's not at all. Um, especially on this short notice. The, the Lions looked absolutely lost. Um, they really had no game plan, and it showed. Um, people tried, but it just didn't work out. And especially in a high-stakes game, the first week of the, the playoffs, the Browns haven't been in the playoffs since I was, what, three? <laughs> I mean, to not have your head coach, the Cleveland, the Browns, they deserve something good, but it's it's just not happening, and I don't know why. You, you yeah, gotta feel bad for them. Yeah, your heart goes out to the Browns fans because it's probably be one and done for them. But we are gonna get ready for the picks. Yeah, uh, your good buddy Allen also was actually here last week doing the picks for Team Challengers. He went one and two on the week. I expect better out of him. He's, yeah. He's he's a lot wiser here. Yeah. He did have the Packers laying the six against the Bears. They won that one running away. He took the Titans laying the seven and a half in Houston. I warned him against that pick, and it still it did not work out for him because Deshaun Watson kept that close. And he took the Panthers getting six and a half against the Saints at home. That one did not work out in his favor. Come on, Allen. You know better than that. <laughs> yeah, I went two and one last week. I went head to head with Allen on that Saints Panthers pick. I took the Saints laying the points. I got that one right. I had the Ravens laying 11 and a half points against the, against the Bengals. That game was over in the second quarter. And I had, I did lose the Jets. Let me down one more time. I took them getting the three and a half points in Foxborough. <laughs> and they completely did not show up. <laughs> I'm sorry about everything that you're going through as a Jets fan. But I mean, one Adam Gase is, is gone, which is a great thing. And from what I'm hearing, Joe Douglas is actually going to be able to make the decision of who the next coach should be. That's correct. Who do you want as a next coach? I, for me, I'm open to anybody. I look at it as, Hey, get me the guy who's going to coach the whole team. I don't want the offensive coordinator who's going to ignore the defense or the defensive coach to ignore the offense. I want the CEO who's going to run the whole team. It sounds like that's what they're looking for. So not an Eric the enemy type guy. You want like a urban Meyer. Like I want a whole, I want the whole package. Like I, I'm open to whoever it is. Like if 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 Eric Bieniemy demonstrates to me, hey, I can run the team. I can have input on the defense and be aware of what's going on. As opposed to I'm gonna go hide in the corner and just run the offense like Adam Gase did. That's that's what I'm looking to see. I don't even think Adam Gase ran the offense. Well, he did. He just ran like he still had Peyton Manning, Demarius Thomas, and all those guys. When he only did not. Yeah, I, it wasn't pretty pretty. No, it was not. And on the on the year with the picks. Team Challengers had a respectable year. They went 26, 24, and one. I went 30 and 21. So it was a pretty tight year. What is it normally like? I've you like the, I've won all three years I've done this, but the spread has gotten much closer because the, the challengers stepped up their games. Well, hopefully I can uh, bridge the gap just a little bit more. Yeah, we are going into the playoffs here. We're going to pick all six games of the week here. So Charlie, I'm doing some heavy lifting on the podcast here. Bring it on. Uh, we're going to go one at a time here. We're going to get our pick music going here. We're going to start with the schedule as it is. We're going to start on Saturday afternoon. We're going to start with the Colts-Bills game. Saturday, 105 on CBS. The Bills are laying six and a half points. Charlie, where are you going? I'm going with the Buffalo Bills. Um, we talked about Cleveland deserving something good. Buffalo deserves that tenfold. Um, last week, they had a great week against the Dolphins. And I think Josh... Uh, Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs are motivated and they come in next week and they pretty much clean house and they advance to the next round. 
I'm right there with you. I'm taking the Bills too, laying the six and a half points. This is one where I feel like the Bills look like the best team in football right now. I mean, you take away the Hail Mary, Hail Murray lost the Cardinals. They could have won mm-hmm. 10 straight games and the season. They're peaking. And I don't like the way the Colts have played down the stretch. I mean, they could have lost twice the Texans. They struggled to beat Jacksonville. They collapsed in Pittsburgh. I think this would be a game where the Bills end up winning this one running away. Next up, we are going to Saturday, 440 on Fox. Rams at the Seahawks. Seahawks are laying four at home. Charlie, where are you going? I'm going with the Seattle Seahawks. Um, Russell Wilson has been the model of consistency in the NFL the last couple of years at the quarterback position. And his experience with with the postseason will outshine um, Jared Goff. Is, Is he still hurt? We, we don't know if he's at play yet. Well, there's another question mark right there. So the easy bet right now would be the Seattle Seahawks. I'm actually going to go head to head with you. And I'm going to take the Rams getting the points here just because I'm not confident what Russell Wilson has shown me down the stretch. I like the Ram defense. They're going to keep this close. I feel like Sean McVay will find enough. If you start Wolford to keep this game close, I'm getting more than a field goal. I think this game screams 17, 14. I'm going to take the Rams here. Let get the points. Well, I wish you good luck with that one, sir. I do. Next up, we are going to your game. Saturday night, Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Washington football team. The Bucs are laying eight and a half. Are you taking your own team? Every fiber in my being is telling me not to, but I am anyway. I am I believe the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will – I think they're going to squeak one out. Now. Even though they're giving eight and a half, they're, the Washington football team is definitely going to cover that. I think they win by a field goal maybe five points. Yeah, so I agree with you there. I agree with your guy. We take the Washington football team to cover the number because, as I said before, pass rush. Tom Brady has trouble with teams that can rush for. Washington can do that. Washington at home is going to be dangerous. And the two teams that have won at recently, home division games, sub-500 records, they've won the first games. That's something I would be terrified of. I'm a San Bay fan. So, including also, a so Arians over Rivera Arians 2014. The – Last two times the Buccaneers have been in the playoffs, they faced an NFC East team, and they lost both times. The last time they were in the playoffs, they lost to the Giants. The time before that, against the then-Washington Redskins, lost that game. So history may repeat itself, but I think Tampa Bay will do it. All right, so we're both taking the football team getting the points here. Next up, Sunday afternoon, 105 on the ESPN Megacast. Ravens at the Titans. Ravens laying three and a half. Where are you going, Charlie? I'm going to take the Tennessee Titans. Um they're home. They're tech, they're the underdog, even though they're at home. Um, this is kind of one of the easier picks for me. I just love Derrick Henry, and I love what Mike Rabel's done with the Tennessee Titans. Um, Lamar Jackson's going to have to wait one more year, um, and next year, I think next year the Ravens they'll make it to the Super Bowl next season. But that is not, now is not their time. I'm actually going head to head to you here again. I'm taking the Ravens laying the three and a half. It's a team that's red hot down the stretch. They've won five in a row. They've blown out four teams in a row, and I just can't trust that Tennessee defense. I know that the offense is phenomenal, but they have been giving up points left and right down the stretch. Baltimore has been red hot. J.K. Dobbins running game, Lamar Jackson's hot. I think they get the playoff win here. I think they're going to cover the three and a half. I think it's a seven-point win for the Ravens, So we're going in opposition once again. Hey, maybe I can bruise that guy. Yep, you can. Next up, the last NFC game on the board, the CBS Nickelodeon special here with the – by the way, you're going to watch the Nickelodeon cast, see what kind of slime they do after Alvin Kamara scores a touchdown. I <laughs> I can't even say it's 2020 anymore. Yeah. This is a <laughs> br- new idea, but the Bears are at the Saints. The Saints are laying in nine and a half points, biggest number on the board. Do you trust the Saints to cover it? No. Khalil Mack. I mean, that's really all I have to say. Especially when Drew Brees, he's not been the Drew Brees of old. And if it's not Drew Brees, it's Jason Hill. I mean, I think the Saints win, but the Bears are able to cover. It's going to be, once again, the two NFC South teams. A lot lot closer than people would think. Yeah, this one is the trickiest one for me to pick because I know that the Saints are the much better team. I know it's tough for me to bet on Trubisky. I know this is also me thinking last year when I had the Saints thought they were going to cruise past the Vikings the first round. They lost at home in the Superdome. But I'm going to take the Saints here. I just can't put my faith in Trubisky going on the road against that defense. They'll make some big turnovers. If the Saints will find a way to win by double digits, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the Saints. I'll lay the points, but I can barely see a scenario where you get that right and the Bears end up covering. Yeah, I, so there's something about Drew Brees, and I know that he's retiring after this year. But I, 
there may be a little extra motivation for him there, but I just, there's just something about it. I, I can't put my finger on it. That's it. And last one, Brown Steelers, Sunday night at 8 20, on NBC. This game started as a four-point spread for the Steelers, grown to six since the Stefanski news broke. Who are you taking? Prior to the news, I was taking the Browns, but now I am taking the Pittsburgh Steelers, even though the Steelers struggled mightily down there. Um, I think without a head coach, you can't really operate. Um, yeah, somebody could step in and surprise people, but I think you know, Mike Tomlin will have his team ready, and Ben Roethlisberger will be there after taking the week off. So I got to go with the Steelers at this point. I'm right there with you. I'm taking. I was taking the Steelers even before this news broke. I'm more confident about it now. Now I've got coach a big deal for Cleveland. Plus, people forget that Pittsburgh is very, very good. They have a tremendous defense. They, I think they found themselves in the Week 16 game against the Colts. They remember who they were offensively, found a way to win the game. Week 17, their backups almost beat Cleveland full strength and in Cleveland. And now they're going back to Pittsburgh. Cleveland's down a coast. They're down some key players. I think the Steelers are going to win this game by at least a touchdown and break the Browns' hearts again because the last time the Browns in the playoffs lost at Heinz Field first round 2002. I think it's going to happen again. I wish the Browns fans all the luck in the world. I just don't see it happening. I do not either. So to reset the picks here, starting with the Saturday game, Bills laying six and a half against the Colts. Charlie and I both like the Bills. Saturday afternoon, Rams, Seahawks. Seahawks laying four. Charlie is laying the points with the Seahawks. I'm taking them with the Rams. Saturday night, Bucks, Washington. Bucks laying eight and a half. We are both taking the points with Washington. Sunday, game one, Ravens, Titans. Ravens laying three and a half. I will lay the points with the Ravens. Charlie is taking them with the Bucks. Wait, not the Bucks, the, the, the Titans. Bears, Saints. There are too many games this round, but we'll keep going anyway. Weird. <laughs> Charlie is taking the points with the Bears, getting nine and a half. I will lay them with the Saints, getting the nine and a half. And finally, Steelers, Browns on Sunday night. Steelers laying six. We are both taking that. Those are your picks for Wild Card Weekend. And that's probably the biggest week I'll ever do on the picks because I feel like it's so many games. Well, next week there's four. Four? Yes. Yeah. Eight. And then we're doing four, two, one the rest of the way. Not bad. Math. Yeah. Broadcast, broadcast majors. We, we don't do math unless there's statistics. Yeah. Unless you're trying to figure out like what like resolution you got to set the camera to. That's, that's the only math to figure out. Yeah. That, that and uh, when I was uh, doing live broadcasts yeah. before, we realized yeah. that there were live stats on the website. Of yeah. us. We would take us by hand. Yeah. Uh, we would count basketball points and assists. And it was, all over the place and somebody was like you know they count that for you automatically right we're like there you go yep yeah. so anyway those are the picks for this week next week i'm gonna be joined by sports grace alex Asano. we're gonna talk more about that steeler brown game i was a big steelers guy so i feel like he's feel confident that he'll be talking to you about a steeler win this time a lot of my friends are steelers fans and i hope wow. the best for them um do you though <laughs> I do it's because the last couple of years have been a lot of failed expectations. You know, um, I think it was what, two years ago when they were supposed to win the Super Bowl with Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown and, and both of them were gone. Yep. And they lost in the last game of the season. I mean, it now with a little thing from Juju this year, ego has been checked from majority of the players even in his own right juju his he checked his ego he stopped doing the whole dancing thing for tiktok which if you know anything about hockey yes i do you never step on the logo yeah so to dance on the logos i mean he got what he deserved so hopefully he puts the team first mentality there and the Steelers fans can celebrate something positive for the first time in a fairly long time. Yeah, that would be good. Charlie, thanks for all the time. I really appreciate it. Before I let you go, how can people on so find on social media? Keep on some of the stuff you're up to. Um, you follow me on Twitter. That's the, the most that I use. Um, at I don't even know what, what my name is. I've changed it so many times. Uh, <laughs> at, Charlie, at Charlie Borges Jr. Um, I just came out with an article today for Pucks and Pitchforks, which is the uh, devil's website I, I uh Right for it was a 25, 100 word piece. So, deep, deep dive, take a look. Deep dive, yeah, yeah, a, a long one. 
Yeah, it's a long one. Definitely some fun. Charlie, thanks for all the time. Also want to point out, I know you're a big Star Wars guy. I want to ask you offhand, have you ever seen the animated Clone Wars movie? I've seen the movie and I'm currently watching the show. I'm, I think I'm in the middle of the second season. Um, it's just funny you bring that up. My girlfriend's here uh, for the, uh, the, the week or whatever. She's on break. And we watched all six of the first two trilogies in row one. And nice. I asked her what her rankings were and I don't agree with them, but I'm just happy that she's been able to watch all of the movies. And I don't know if I'm going to show her the new trilogy, the Disney trilogy. Yeah. That's a, that's a little, that's a little tough and go. Cause I mean, like that's one yeah. where I like, I would watch seven. I think seven is fine. Eight, I think you experience. And if she's, if she's into it, go to nine, but otherwise you can say, ah, forget it. We'll we don't have to worry about that last one. That's what I said. I, I think we're going to watch seven, but eight and nine, she can do it on her own time. because I don't <laughs> know, I've seen them twice. I don't need to see them again. You're good. I, I, yeah yeah but anyway we're going to talk about that next we're doing more star wars covers of the podcast and we join my buddies pete and nick we're going to start our dive down the clone war saga we're going to talk about the film right after this yeah and we are good and that's actually something i'm doing on here i'm gonna i had like four i got three four three person panel for the finale of mandalorian on here and